Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 9.6, Solving Rational Equations and Inequalities. So these are, you know, challenging. I'm going to show you my way to do it. A lot of people like to cross multiply here. It's not a bad idea, but you can't solve all the problems that way. Let's get that out of there. So I just multiply by everything that's on the bottom, a.k.a. the common denominator. So when I multiply all of this times this, again, this thing's in the way, the x plus 4 is cancel, and I'm left with 12. When I multiply all of this by this, the 2's cancel, and I'm left with x times x plus 4. So now I have a quadratic, which is fairly straightforward to solve. However, when you're done, you need to check it. Um, I've checked this one. It works. But I'll show you in a little bit why you have to check it. It has something to do with excluded values. This is an ideal chance for you to try one on your own. And now I will do it. And again, looking at it, checking it, it works. Always check it. Here's why. Take this equation, multiply everything by two, uh, 5, and x minus 2. You get 5x. Actually, this one's going to work fine. x minus 2, 10. 6x equals... 12, take it back, x equals 2. However, if we put 2 in here, we get 2 minus 2 equals 0, which was a no-no. We can't do that. So we cross it out, and we write no solution. That's why we have to check. Make sure that we haven't put a 0 in the bottom. And also, since it's easy to make mistakes, make sure we've done the problem right. Another one, which we will rewrite first. So we can see what we have to multiply by. We recognize it's easier. Just multiply by x minus 7, x minus 2. The first one, we get 3 times x minus 2. The second one, we get all of it which we know foils out right here. So I'm just going to foil it out on the fly. And this, the last one, everything cancels. This is typically where I make mistakes because I go too fast combining all my like terms. Everything cancels out. So we have x times x minus 6 equals 0, x equals 0, and 6. Check to make sure they both work without putting zeros on the bottom. They do. We're good to go. One more problem. Hopefully you've seen the trick. If not, you better learn how to handle it. We can multiply everything by all these numbers, but it's really nice to pull the negative off the bottom and put it up top. Now we take it all and multiply it by the common denominator. It's just, again, a lot easier by changing that negative over. You could do it without it, but don't recommend it. This one has a ton 
of algebra to clean up, but not a big deal. Before we're done, we check, and lo and behold, if we put 1 in, it won't work. But negative 4 thirds will, so that counts as our check. A lot of math built up from simple beginnings to get all the way up to that. Take a break from that for a second. Rate problems are rational expression problems. Let's go ahead and read that. And understand the way to do these problems is to write down what the rate is. And the rate is a lawn per minute. Blondie and deranged both have a rate. When we add them together, that's the rate they do the last one. And you can only do it this way. Some other ways you could do it, but this is the best way. So Blondie mows lawn in two hours. So she does one lawn in 120 minutes. D range, we don't know. So we call it T. Together, one lawn in 80 minutes. Now that we've set it up, multiply by, oof, goodness gracious, 240, I think. T. So we get 2T plus 240 equals 3T. T equals 240 minutes, also known as 4 hours. It takes 4 hours for deranged to mow lawn. Those are very, very, very challenging problems. I'm not going to be quizzing or testing on them, but good to see. Last but not least, how do we do an inequality? Step one, set it equal and solve it. I'm going to multiply through by 8x because that will get rid of all the fractions. It's the LCD. Step two, set both the bottoms equal to zero. In this case, I only have to do it once. 8x equals zero, x equals zero. Step three, put them on a number line. Zero and seven-fourths. Then check all the gaps and figure out where it works and where it doesn't. So if we put 1 in, here we get 1 fourth plus 5 eighths. And we check, is that greater than 1 half? And the answer is yes, 7 eighths is greater than 1 half. So it works in between 0 and 7 fourths. We can then check the other sides and find out, no, it doesn't work there. No, it doesn't work there. Try negative 1, try 2, try 10, try negative 10. You'll figure it out pretty quickly. I will accept this as an answer. Of course, you'd have to scribble in the middle. But if you're really slick, you will remember you can do this. Or you can do this. Interval notation and set notation. Any way you want to do it, I'm good with that. That's it. A lot of math. We'll give you a whole day and a half to practice. Good luck.